I'm just curious, how exactly are Toyota, Honda, Mazda, Subaru, and all the other car makers who believe they don't really need to sell EVs in America, doesn't matter, how exactly do they plan on getting around this little issue? <laughs> Sucked in. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, and it's about damn time. Emissions, regulations are coming into force in China, which is going to annihilate legacy automakers who have known about these changes for long enough to bloody well do something about it, and they did not. Europe, same thing. Euro 7 is coming in in a couple of years, but now America is saying, yeah, you know what? We're going to do the same thing. And this is going to cause some big problems. You know how hard it's going to be to make engines that actually meet these regulations like in the real world when you're telling the truth, not lying about it? Very, very. The Biden administration is about to propose the toughest ever curbs on car pollution while stopping short of an electric vehicle mandate or ban on gas powered models. It's just going to do what Europe and China is doing, make it very, very difficult to make vehicles that can actually meet these standards unless they are electric. Thank you, Joe Biden. This is fantastic. Now, you know, I wouldn't say I'm Joe Biden's biggest fan, but I've got to say in this area and in terms of the IRA, I definitely like what they've done. The proposed standards on cars and light trucks, meaning pickup trucks, etc., will be announced Wednesday in Detroit. And they're expected to govern tailpipe emissions of carbon dioxide smog forming nitrogen oxide and other pollution from vehicles manufactured from model years 2027 and onwards this plan was described by people briefed on elements of the proposal who asked not to be named because it isn't yet public this is actually going to be a big challenge for a lot of automakers i mean toyota tacoma do you see any electric versions of that do you see toyota planning an electric version of that no i mean ram uh, you know, they're going to make a few electric pickup trucks in 2020, who knows when. The Ram Rev is awesome, but I mean, are they really taking it seriously? I don't think so. I mean, this sort of thing means these big gas guzzling pickup trucks and massive SUVs in America, yeah, they really won't have much choice. Tesla made, you know how much Tesla made? Tesla made nearly $2 billion last year from carbon credits, credits from other car manufacturers who had to pay other car manufacturers said, oh, here you go, Tesla. Here's some more money to help you take over our sales, take over our market. This is what's going to happen in the United States. Because these manufacturers, you know how long it takes them to get their butts into gear? I mean, Ford, what are they saying? All right, we're going to build 600,000 EVs in 2023. By the end of the year, at least our run rate will be 600,000. What's their current run rate? 120,000. They made, not even that, their current run rate, 40,000. I mean, Ford made 10,000 electric vehicles in the first quarter of the year. 10,000. They're not really taking it seriously yet. Yeah, Ford's trying. They're doing their best. And they will beat out much of the competition. So will General Motors. I mean, those two at least are making an effort. What about Mazda? Can't be bothered. What about Subaru? Nah, not doing anything. I mean, what about Honda? They're, they're talking about it. They're going to buy a few EVs from, from General Motors. Yeah. Most companies in the US are thinking the US is a dumping ground. We'll keep on making our gas guzzles here and we'll focus on our EV efforts on China and Europe. Now, they don't have a choice. They will have to change. The major auto US automakers, they say, are pleading that these requirements aren't too punitive uh, because they've got to compete with Tesla. EV manufacturers such as Tesla insist the administration should take advantage of new federal government investments in charging and battery production to push for even stricter limits on car emissions. And I agree. I mean, I don't think Tesla's saying, you know what, we want to take your market share. We want to penalize you. They're saying this will push other manufacturers to basically see our plan, Tesla's part three plan, to be part of it. Tesla knows it can't control the entire industry. It's impossible. Can't probably have any more than maybe 10% of the entire industry to be realistic. But it's the, it, you know, it's saying the world can save trillions of dollars. I mean, Elon Musk saying we can save 14 trillion if we convert to renewables and EVs at a fast pace rather than a really slow one. Now, this plan from the Biden administration is part of a multi pronged Biden administration strategy to clamp down on planet warming pollution from transportation. And electricity. Now, by the way, it's not just about planet warming pollution. 
the, the Biden administration knows that this is causing massive health problems in the United States. How many people die from cancer every year? You know how many people die from cancer every year? Every single day, there's 2,000 deaths in the United States from cancer. The World Health Organization says a very large percentage of those are from pollution from cars and trucks. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency are writing these new requirements, and they're set to propose new rules for greenhouse gas emissions from heavy-duty trucks on Wednesday and power plants as soon as later this month. This will have the strong effect of driving the United States to renewable energy and EVs faster than what it otherwise would have. Limits on car pollution are key to helping the US meet its Paris Agreement commitment to slash greenhouse gas emissions by at least 50% from 2005 levels and by the end of the decade, fulfilling President Joe Biden's ambition for at least half of all new vehicle sales to be fully electric by 2030. While the US automakers such as General Motors and Ford have outlined bullish plans for EV sales, environmental advocates say aggressive tailpipe standards are necessary. There has to be continuous pressure for improvement to prevent industry backsliding. Dan Becker, director of the Center for Biological Diversity Safe Climate Transport Campaign said, environmentalists, public health and EV advocates have lobbied the administration to ensure requirements for model year 2030 vehicles are 75% tougher than those for 2021. So 2021 versus 2027, these, thing, these rules are going to come into effect in 2027. And they're going to be 75% tougher than 2021. Imagine the amount of investment that's going to be needed, the spending of money that we needed. It'll be billions of dollars to meet these new emissions regulations. What that means is manufacturers have to decide. They're going to say, okay, will we spend billions trying to improve the emissions of our existing gas powered vehicles, which are not the future of the automotive industry? Or do we take those billions and put them into electric vehicle development, into building factories for EVs? Now, considering the IRA is rewarding manufacturers for building batteries, cells, packs, and EVs in the US, plus this would benefit them in terms of their future of their companies, you would hope that most of them will make the smart decision. Strong standards are incredibly important to sending market signals to accelerate electric vehicle emissions and secure necessary emission reductions later on, Brett Carman, a senior advocate with the National Resources Defense Council said. The EPA is poised to reject some environmentalists' requests to set standards through 2035. However, automakers push for a shorter timetable, cautioning White House officials in a February 14 meeting that the trajectory for EVs and emissions reductions depends on factors outside their control, including investments in charging infrastructure and critical mineral production. Isn't it interesting how a lot of automakers say it's outside of our control? You, you never hear Tesla say that. You never say the, the future of our company exists on factors outside of our control. I mean, when Tesla was being penalized, seven and a half thousand US dollars, right? All the other automakers, except for some of the time General Motors, we're getting the $7,500 bonus. Tesla wasn't getting it. Did you ever hear Tesla say, oh, our company is being controlled by factors outside of our control? It was, but they never use that excuse. That's what you've got to do here if you're an automaker. Don't blame anyone else for your situation. Take responsibility today. Make a 10-year plan today. That's what a lot of them I don't think are doing. I mean, Kia is changing their strategy every year. Many automakers, BMW, they're changing their strategy as they go along clearly because they're afraid of losing sales of gasoline-powered vehicles. The shift will require a massive 100-year change to the US industrial base, and the rule should be based on a clear-eyed assessment of market readiness, the Alliance for Automotive Innovation said on Thursday. The EPA proposal is set to also tighten limits on smog-forming vehicle pollution potentially forcing automakers to adopt exhaust controls already used on cars sold in Europe, China, and other markets. And so they should be. I mean, there is a rule in New York, right, that I really like. You can't sit outside a school and idle your car, just pointlessly idle your car for longer than a certain, I think it's for longer than a couple of minutes. That rule should be enforced everywhere. This is the sort of logic that's already enforced in Europe and China because they know the massive damages caused by the emissions in these vehicles. It's good to see the United States come to the party. Now Australia needs to follow suit. Let me know your thoughts 
in the comments and thank you for watching.